Hello friendsies, welcome back to my channel. Uh, you can tell that this video uh, was filmed after I haven't filmed a lot of other videos for a while because I forget how to look at the camera every time. Still haven't figured out how to use this tripod. And my hair and makeup are a little rough and it's late in the day. So, <laughs> welcome to this video. Do you guys have videos on YouTube that you watch kind of like repeatedly and they're like your favorite form of background noise? Because I do. And one of my favorite videos to watch is uh, the like outside Xbox and outside Extra Team talk about their precious Pokemon memories. And I was watching it fairly recently and I realized it was in my watch history for like the third or fourth time. So I decided I wanted to talk about my precious Pokemon memories because I made a video god probably in 2020 so like four years ago where i talk about if i was um like a pokemon trainer and a pokemon gym leader and what kind of gym leader i would be and it was ghost pokemon because gengar is my favorite pokemon she's fat and spooky just like me i have my little soot sprite today and my little this is i mean this is old i have this haunted mansion top hold on let me that's better <laughs> But I don't know, I thought that would be fun to talk about like memories I have from growing up playing Pokemon because I've been playing Pokemon since I was like a little kid. I was born in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, so obviously Pokemon was a huge part of my personality and still kind of is. And I think it was, ah, uh, this is another funny thing that I have been thinking of, like especially because I'm using this light stick and this uh fan kit of Stray Kids to like try to train my eye of where I want to look at the camera. I keep wanting to look here because I want to look at myself because I'm just like, even when I don't like my own makeup and hair, uh, I still want to look at myself. Anyway, I'm using these to train my eyes. So I think it's super funny because uh, I was sleeving amiibo cards one night because I collect Animal Crossing amiibo cards. I was sleeving amiibo cards one night and I had a realization and just started to giggle and I went to my brother. I was like, hey, you remember when you and our other brother were younger and you used to collect like baseball, football, basketball cards? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I remember how you used to collect Pokemon cards? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I collect <laughs> amiibo cards mainly. I still have my Pokemon cards. Collect amiibo cards and K-pop photo cards. I also collect cardboard pictures of men and little animal-like creatures from Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought that was funny and I do still have my Pokemon cards. I went through my Pokemon cards one times and I had to I threw out racist jinx because I didn't realize we still had racist jinx. There's a video for that too. Anyway, I want to talk about some precious Pokemon memories while we're here because I do have quite a few precious Pokemon memories. Some of them are even recent. Alright, so the first like precious Pokemon memory I want to talk about is playing Pokemon Crystal and the Suicune Chase. If you didn't play Pokemon Crystal, it was... Well, okay, so I didn't play Pokemon Red, Blue, or Yellow. I played a tiny bit, I think, of Pokemon Red, and then I stole Pokemon Yellow from a kid whose mom used to babysit me. He had Pokemon Yellow, so I stole it from him and played it for like a week, and then his, like, our moms found out that I had it, so I had to return it. But... I didn't really play a lot of red, blue, and yellow, so for me, Pokemon Crystal was the first time that there was, like, a Pokemon expanded universe. In the Pokemon world, I am just that young? Old? I was just that young that Pokemon Crystal was my first expanded universe. I am that old that Pokemon Crystal was my first expanded universe of Pokemon. Because not only was it the game that was coming in gold and silver, but it was also additional things like the Suicune chase. And Suicune was like one of the first like legendaries. Because for me, at that age, playing at that time, uh, not Suicune, um, Lugia and Ho-Oh were like, oh my god, that's so cool. They're legendaries. But I had played um, like a bit of both of my bro- with the three of us having three siblings, one brother would get gold, one brother would get silver, I would play whatever there was, and then my oldest brother bought Crystal, and I asked him about it, I played it a little bit because he let me put it on my Game Boy, and then he let me have it when he went away to college, so Pokemon Crystal was like my game. So Lugia and Ho-Oh were like, oh yeah, cool, legendaries, but to me it's like, we've been there, done that, like they're already in their own game, but Suicune was the new legendary to be able to catch and it was the whole they um 
Correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't remember uh, this far back, but I believe in Silver and Gold, they hadn't expanded super, like, super too much into the Legendary Beasts, and Pokemon Crystal did, because Suicune was one of the Legendary Beasts, and it was just so, so cool. I didn't understand at the time, too, that you had to get to Endgame to be able to catch Suicune. Like, I had no idea. So I was always, like, on a hunt. And anywhere I went, I, like, learned his patterns. Because once you beat the 8th Gym Leader, you can, like... As you're def I think, I think as you're defeating the, the 8 Gyms, you're discovering a new place on the map that, like, Suicune will show up. And then once you beat the 8th Gym Leader, you can literally chase him around the map. You have to defeat the Elite Four and get to Endgame to be able to actually catch him but it like for me I didn't know that so I th always thought I could just finally catch him if I was fast enough so I can't tell you how many times I spent just like hours following Suicune around the map because I had surf at that point I had fly I had cut to like get through the the, the pseudoodos that would just like hang out <laughs> everywhere it was so cute and that was something I very much specifically remember too is when they introduced like pseudoodo and being able to be being able to like interact with him the first time and it would show up on the little screen you would use cut and if pseudo would have popped out it would be like that little pop-up picture of him and it was so cool the first time i ever experienced that i was like that's a pokemon <laughs> gold and silver just like gold silver crystal just mean a lot to me in general crystal was my favorite and i still to this day think it's my favorite pokemon game i just think that generation couldn't do wrong. We had the whole plot point with the slowpoke tails and then the forest that you have- I forgot what the forest was called but the forest you would have to go through after the town of slowpoke tails. You- there was an event I believe where you could get the 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 flutie toot toot to <laughs> get celipi which I always wanted to do and then could never figure it out. I don't know if at the time I was playing it was like implemented necessarily or if it was like in Japan specifically and not America I don't I honestly don't know because I learned about the Celebi event much later in life but I I do think that that gold silver crystal I don't think that generation could ever do any wrong I really don't I just adored it I just adored it now <laughs> I'm I'm sorry we're so far in and I have I'm not super super into the world of Pokemon as much as I used to be when I was younger I'm much more like into the world of Animal Crossing if you've been on this channel for any amount of time you will know especially in the beginning of this video where I say that I collect Animal Crossing amiibo cards and specifically sleeve them to go in my binder but uh I don't remember what generations this was it might have been three or four please correct me if I'm wrong but playing Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. Favor I like, I say Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Crystal is in fact my favorite Pokemon game of all time. I don't think it can ever be done. But a, generation wise, I think Ruby, Emerald, Ruby, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is my favorite generation because of the storylines and the plot points. I do really think that the enemy, uh, like Team Magma and Team... What the fuck are the teams called? Team Magma and something else, right? I don't know. I think that whole setup is incredible. I really like that, like, not only is it just, like, kind of stealing Pokemon and, like, uh, Pokemon cannibalism and, like, that kind of thing. I like that it had, like, much bigger, significant environmental effects of the villains. I thought that was really cool. I think perhaps Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald were my first... Other than other than Legend of Zelda, so I think in specifically the Pokemon universe, I think because of the villains and what they were trying to achieve, um, and then if you had Emerald with Rayquaza and everything, I think it was my first sort of exposure to like a bigger storyline, which I am obsessed with. I've talked about it a million times before. I love world building. I love the in-depth storyline. I love that like, yes, this plot point has a reason. But if you look further into the lore, there's another significant reason as to why this is happening in the plot. I'm obsessed with that. And that was what I played Ruby. I Sorry, I played Sapphire and Emerald specifically. Those were my those are my two. And I loved Sapphire because the the fucking is it Kyogre? Because Groudon is the 
red dude, correct? Uh, the, the water, the water boy was my favorite. The like giant orca basically and orcas fuck shit up lately and I love them for it. Give the ocean back to the ocean animals. Anyway, <laughs> it was just, it was such, like, I have such fond memories of that game, and I can remember that game, like, so, so well. I was obsessed with it. Then you had the fucking, all, like, okay, first of all, graphics were incredible. It was, like, I think it was my first Pokemon game in color as well, because Crystal was still in black and white. Was it in black and white, or did I have, like, the very minimal, like, green trees kind of, kind of thing? Uh, but it was my, like, from what I can remember, it was my first game that was in color. So it was, like, beautiful and vibrant at the time. The graphics were, like, so groundbreaking for me personally. I don't know about in general, but for me personally, it was so cool. And playing Sapphire and Emerald specifically was the first time that I was playing a Pokemon game me. Like, I was playing it. It wasn't a game that my brothers did most of the game and then I would, like, borrow it. I would borrow it and just like play how I wanted to play. It wasn't like the same thing with Legend of Zelda. It wasn't like a game that every time it got hard, I would just like give it to them to do the hard part and then do like the fun running around item collecting part. It wasn't like same thing with Kingdom Hearts. Like I made my brother beat like six bosses for me because I couldn't figure it out. And I just wanted to like run around Destiny Island and like goof off. It was the first game that I can remember that I really had to like actually work at what I was doing. So I couldn't just... I couldn't have too much fun with Pokemon in the sense of like, I couldn't just be silly goofy. I really had to pay attention to like the items I was picking up and what Pokemon I was collecting. And oh shit, does this Pokemon like understand how to do this move? Another thing I really liked about uh, that generation was, this is going to sound weird, but I, I hope somebody can understand this. In Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, where you like your town that you start in, and the first two gyms feel very, like, tutorial. And maybe that's because I was somebody that was, like, finally learning how to, like, play a game for myself. Perhaps. Um, <laughs> but they feel very tutorial because once you leave the second gym and you have to surf all the way across and up, like, yes, a lot of stuff is on that side of the map. But that side of the map felt like the world exploration and this side of the map feels like nothing. Because your town's like here, the first gym is like up here, and then you're really not doing anything. There's like the lake all the way up here, maybe, that connects with another town. I just, I felt like it was very tutorial, and it like it feels like pretty evenly paced. It feels very like you have to talk to this NPC to like know what you're doing next kind of thing. And then once you get to like on your way to go, to go to the third gym and everything, it felt like... I'm going to use Ocarina of Time specifically because I've mentioned Zelda a couple times. It feels very much like the Lost Woods, Deku Tree, everything, and then you get out into Hyrule Field, and then the rest of the game- well, and that's a fact. Other than the Forest Temple, all of, like, Ocarina of Time is centered around Hyrule Field. Like, you need to move through Hyrule Field specifically. You don't really go all the way to the, like, Lost Woods too much in the game to connect with other things. You're mainly sticking to Hyrule Field. And that's how it felt with Ruby and Sapphire. Like that's like the comparison I can make because I feel like once you get all the way across and you go to that town that has like the big beach and then you go up and it's like that market and everything and then you go up further and it's like the magic man's house and the bridge for the bikes and everything. That All of that feels like new world exploration. And it was really cool because I think from what I can remember, that was the first time I really had that. It, like it was so open world without being open world because you still need to do the gyms in order. But it just it felt very open world for the for somebody experiencing it for the first time, taking the game seriously and learning how to play it to win, not just play it to like goof around and hang out. <laughs> I'm going to speed uh, past this one because it's not super important. It's not really about the game itself, but Sun and Moon. Pokemon Sun and Moon. I have thoughts about it. And by thoughts, I mean like I have two thoughts of it's not very good, but I think it's very fun. Sorry, I'm like playing with this on the soot spray. I just think it's silly. I think Sun and Moon is very fun and very silly and very much for the new generation of Pokemon where it's, I'm not saying this in a bad way, it's very accessi uh, accessible. Very accessible 
and for somebody who grew up with older Pokemon games, obviously were like, you know, graphics and hardware were like very limited, were very, very difficult and challenging and not at all handholdy. Sun and Moon felt very handholdy. So the, but that is coming from somebody who grew up with Pokemon. So nostalgia will sometimes lie to you, not sometimes always, but nostalgia lies to you. And there's nothing wrong with games being easier to play and more accessible for a larger audience. So I may not personally like it, but I am also 28 years old in the year of 2024. So I want to mention Sunny Moon specifically, though, because Sunny Moon was the first Pokemon game that I had gotten in a while. Like up uh, before that, I had not played. I think I might have played popping in to say that you'll see the other infographics because again this video is filmed ahead of time obviously significantly to when it's being posted and there will be many more things happening unfortunately so popping in to say that on top of the infographics keep looking at operation olive branch keep looking at it keep going seeing if there are any families that you can help a dollar is better than nothing at all so make sure you're checking out operation olive branch at all times even if you're boosting it and sending it to other people that might be able to donate five when you can only donate a dollar like that's better than nothing we need to help the people of palestine that are looking to get out get out in whatever way they can so that they can just live live lives just have any basic peace and quiet i think i might have gotten black and white Maybe, I think I got Pokemon Black? I really don't remember because I, I remember that generation, but I never got, I didn't get anywhere near, like, I think I defeated the eight gyms, but I didn't, I wasn't paying too much attention to the story. I just didn't really, like, care too much about anything. I don't know. It was weird. And then, like, in, in Black 2 and White 2, the world from Black and White gets, like, frozen over, right? So then it's, like, a different world. Is that what that plot is? I don't remember. Well, in Black and White, does it have N? I feel bad because I really can't remember too much of Black and White. So Sun and Moon had been the one that I was, like, getting back into. It was really exciting. Uh, my friend Steven, who plays with me, like, we used to play Pokemon together all the time. Like, he was going to get into it as well. Like, we planned... He bought Pokemon Moon, I bought Pokemon Sun, we like played together, sat together, went through like the beginning portions of the game and everything. And as we were playing Pokemon Sun, I, I will say my favorite, my favorite part of Pokemon Sun and Moon is the ghost trial section. I think that's so fucking cool. An abandoned like mini mart with Mimikyu. Mimikyu is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. She's not my absolute favorite because that's you know, Gengar, but she is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. I love the ghosties in like later generations are literally perfect. I love them. So <laughs> I loved that section of Sun and Moon. And the thing with Sun and Moon is I had, I think I had a Ghastly or a Hauntor. I don't remember which one I caught first, but I had one of my babies. And it was the first time ever in my entire Pokemon career that I was finally able to have a Gengar because I didn't know growing up and I don't know if my brothers like knew knew enough to tell me and I also don't know if I had like picked my favorite Pokemon at that point like in my little my little brain back to my video of what makes a favorite I didn't know that you could only get Gengar through trading I had no fucking clue I think because you know what it was when I was younger, I was attached to my starter Pokemon always. It was always the sweet little like water type baby. So I was always attached to my starter Pokemon. I really didn't give two shits about the rest of my party unless they had like, I needed them to for specific moves, right? So Sun and Moon was the first time I was ever able to get a Gengar. And it was so fucking cool because Steven traded with me. I think, what was the one he traded for? What's the psychic one? Is it, uh, it's Abra, Alakazam. One of those psychic boys you can't get unless you train, uh, you trade for them. So it was very cool because not only was I like playing with my friend and like getting to experiencing the game with my friend, uh, which was something that I didn't like. I always played Pokemon alone when I was younger, you know, just me and my little DS in bed past bedtime when mom would come in and check me and I'd have to turn the volume down and like slap my DS shut and shove it under my pillow. It was the first time I was like playing with a friend and also I finally got my Gengar. I got my little ghost baby. And speaking of specifically that, I can't believe I forgot it. To go back to uh, Sapphire and Emerald. Ralts, that little fucking Pokemon. All of my favorite Pokemon are ghost type except for Ralts. Ralts, 
and the fucking what is it it goes up to Gardevoir right that entire evolution line I love I love her <laughs> and the last the last like Pokemon memory I want to talk to you about uh I bought and played Pokemon Violet and I do regret spending the 60 was it 60 or 70 I do regret spending that money I do because what happened the me the precious memory is coming <laughs> this isn't the precious memory part what happened is everybody was talking about it and I when it when the trailers came out for it I was super excited um and because it looked like you know again I hadn't been into Pokemon very long I played Sun and Moon I got to I got to the Ultra Beasts I think and I was just like I'm I'm all set <laughs> so it had been a while since I had played a Pokemon game and I was really excited about the trailer and Pokemon Scarlet I thought was the coolest looking one because it felt like there was going to be so much more to the game Felt like there was gonna be a lot more to the game and Violet didn't really like suit what I was looking for like the the Pokemon variations and everything and like the I really really disliked I don't know what the criticism is on like the Poke the latest Pokemon games I haven't been in the Pokemon like side of the internet too much but I really disliked how it was like specific Pokemon depending on the game you bought so then you were like kind of very like money hungry on Nintendo's part what a surprise but like trying to sell you both games so that you could get all the Pokemon and I really didn't want to get Violet but I ended up getting Violet because of the exclusive Pokemon that were in Violet like what it, it's like mischievous and like her line um just like the uh not in Cinderor. what's the uh C Cinder something the little Pokemon that you have to get the like haunted armor to get the ghost variation if you have Violet so those were what looked good and I got a copy from the library my mom checked it at the, at the library for me so that I could play it a little bit um because I really wanted to play it but I did not have the money and I played it and I I liked it I it, like it was fine there were there were things I was like nah about but it was it was fine and I didn't mind it really um I think I caught my ghastly it was like damn I really have to trade with somebody so that I can get like Gengar it's gonna be so easy everyone's playing all that stuff um I caught a Magikarp and got it evolved to a Gyarados because going back to Pokemon Crystal which I also forgot to mention Pokemon Crystal specifically with the storyline of the red Gyarados I believe it's the seventh or eighth gym leader that's the old old man ice gym that like when you come into town his gym's like down here and then the lake is up here with the red Gyarados that's like terrorizing the town I always was obsessed with the Red Gyarados and that's what I meant by like storytelling that like delved deeper into just like the basic plot of the game. I was always obsessed with the Red Gyarados and I think uh, my brothers taught me the trick of like saving right before you do something like crazy just in case you know you don't it doesn't go well like saving before you enter a gym all that. So that was the first kind of instance of me knowing that too and I think with the red Gyarados there were a couple times where I accidentally killed it and I was so sad and then I caught it and I think I've spoken of this uh in a in a video before if not then I've just talked to friends about it but like one of my Pokemon videos I feel like I must have mentioned this that that was back before like at least for me that was back before like shinies were a thing maybe people at the time knew about them as specifically shinies I didn't know they were shiny so a red Gyarados I just thought was the coolest fucking thing in the world because obviously it's like an incredibly rare beautiful significant creature I love Gyarados as well Gyarados is great water and ghost type that's me the I I caught a Magikarp in playing Pokemon Violet with the copy from the library because I really wanted Gyarados I had heard about like how easy it was to go like shiny hunting so I was like I want that couldn't figure it out couldn't figure it out it was whatever I, I couldn't get my shiny one but I was like whatever I'll have a Gyarados and I love her and she's great so played that copy from the library eventually had to return it and it was like a couple paychecks or so after and I really did not have 60 60 dollars to spend on a video game but I spent 60 dollars on Pokemon Violet and then I was like playing it playing it 
So I go in, I'm pretty much doing the same thing. I'm trying to collect the same Pokemon. And I don't even remember where it is in the game, honestly, but it's like one of the first areas that you could catch a Magikarp, probably like right outside of the tutorial. One of the first like mini beaches that you can catch uh, a Magikarp. So I'm walking, I'm going back and forth across the beach, back and forth across the beach, like letting my switch sit, trying to like ignore it. You know, I'm like, oh, a shiny will come. So finally I was like, fucking whatever. So run into a Magikarp, great. Do my little battle, catch catch my Magikarp, whatever. Named it Riptide. And you know how it's open world, so you could, you know, it's 3D, so you could like pan your switch over. So I'm like standing here, fought fought the Magikarp. So I like come out of the, the battle, right? I'm standing there and a Pokemon kind of runs up behind me. I like turned because I could see it in the corner of the screen. And I was like, oh my God, hi, I don't want to fight you. And then I turned my camera, like, my character literally went like this. And directly fucking in front of me was a golden Magikarp, just, like, flopping. <laughs> and I was like, that's a fucking shiny. So I ran to that Magikarp. I was so fucking careful and so scared that I was gonna, like, lose this Magikarp, lose my shiny. Uh, and then I ended up naming it Poseidon. And I evolved her into my red Gyarados and it was incredible. I was ready to just like speed run through everything, like get like push past everybody if I needed to and go to the area in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I was gonna say Violet but it's not exclusive. The area where it's like sort of near end game because it's like near the like high powered things where it's the lighthouse and then you like look down and it's that weird little like big circle area with the couple little islands and that's where you have to fight the like isn't it isn't it like a giant lapras or something it's like whatever the gigantic pokemon fucking is i don't know that like the like side quest with arvin or something like that i thought i was gonna have to go there for like a shiny gyarados because like that seems you know like the most plausible thing and I was I mean maybe it was just me thinking this and not actually like something Nintendo thought of but I was like hey that's kind of reminiscent of like old Pokemon games like a big body of water that's not necessarily the ocean would be cool to like put in a red Gyarados and maybe there's like a shiny that only shows up you know every so many hours minutes of you playing because I think they've implemented things like that before but it was just very cool because I was like at the beginning of the game and I turn and look and my Magikarp is just on the beach. And I was like, that's my Gyarados. So I ran to her, named her Cotter. And then I had my, my, red, my red Gyarados on my team. And that was the team that I had. I had the, I picked the cat. What was the cat? I don't remember the name. It was the grass cat. Picked the grass cat, named, named it Nugget. Named him Nugget after my sweet baby girl. She's sleeping over here. You wouldn't be able to see her, but she's sleeping. I named her Nugget. I had my Red Gyarados named Poseidon. I had my Hauntor. No, not my Hauntor. My, my, I had my Gengar that I named Baby Love because my friend Megan uh, traded with me so I could get my Gengar. Um, I had, I don't know. I just, I had a bunch of ghost Pokemon that, uh, that I was like giving like cute names to it was all it was the spooky girls it was the spooky girl squad because all of my ghost pokemon were female like the first three I was like oh that's so cool they're girls and then every time I was catching a new pokemon that was a ghost type because I was going around the map specifically trying to catch ghost type pokemon because that's the only thing I care about they all just happen to keep being female pokemon and I was like you know what fuck it spooky girl time and then I remember I got like three parties worth and I had them like laid out in my boxes because what I did is like my my main party with like my starter Pokemon, my Red Gyarados, my Gengar, you know, we were getting to like as high levels as we could. And then I was going to go back because that's I felt like that was the only way I was going to get my money's worth out of this fucking game because Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are not worth the initial $60. And I don't know how much the DLC costs, but I had a couple parties worth of Pokemon that were like other ghosts. Like I had a, a fucking um, what's the little it's the little electric one. That got introduced in X and Y and it's electric ghost. Rotom! I had a Rotom. I had the 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 graveyard dog Pokemon. 
and then I had, you know, I had like, you know, layers of Pokemon with different levels. So I was going to go through and, you know, max everybody's levels. And then, oh, I started collecting Eevees. I started collecting Eevees randomly outside of that one town that like has the biggest Eevee population and naming them um, after different uh, minor g Greek gods and goddesses. And then like associating that with their, their uh, like elemental stones. So I was going to have the team of Eevees. Because that was the only way to get my money's worth of that game. I did delete it off my Switch. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed. And let me know if you have, like, any precious Pokemon memories. Those are mine. I just, I do, I do love Pokemon. I just think for me personally, it has run its course. Has run its course for me. My my little my little soot sprites coming out of my head. It has run its course for me because I am uh, very much a Animal Crossing girly. I've talked about Animal Crossing on my channel multiple times. I've talked about like my whole story with it. I just I adore Animal Crossing, and this year I would like to do maybe a bit more of it, and with it than I have. So we will see. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.